Next tonight, a power surge this weekend may be to blame for a fire at a home on Gilmore Street on Madison's west side. Fire crews were initially called there for a carbon monoxide alarm. People inside say they had been using several space heaters after losing their heat from the power surge. Turns out in addition to the carbon monoxide, there was also a small fire in the attic and ceiling. Crews found smoldering insulation and burning wires and were able to put it out. Now, recouping expenses for damaged furnaces and appliances after the power surge, that's the situation for many after 2,000 people lost power because of a car crash on the west side over the weekend. Our Arman Rahman has spent the day finding solutions for people caught in the surge. Arman? Yeah, Eric and Charlotte, an MGNE spokesperson tells me the outage caused what they call a voltage variation or power surge, and that was beyond their control. But residents I spoke to today say now they're left with the bill for repairing or replacing some big appliances. It was the same ominous sound heard in many West Side households Friday night. And we heard a couple of big pops and flashes. There were a couple of popping sounds and then it went dark. And the same unpleasant surprises the next morning. You know, the house went from 65 to 50 yeah. and it was continuing to go down. So gonna go do laundry. Oh, the washer doesn't work. Um, gonna heat something up in the oven doesn't heat up. Brian Tennant in Westmoreland was able to get his furnace up and running on Saturday. He's still working on repairing other appliances. Well, I mean, I'm anticipating an out-of-pocket cost of a couple thousand, probably conservatively. Meanwhile, in the Sunset Village neighborhood, Max Coons awoke to similar short circuits. Come upstairs and find some bulbs that had exploded out of their sockets. We found out that the water heater the circuit board on that was fried, and we found out that our dishwasher was out, too. When they contacted MG&E for help, they got this. I mean, she was cordial and professional, but just basically said, like, you know, we're, we're not liable. Too bad, so sad, or we'll get back to you, or contact our legal department. An mg &E spokesperson says what happened was rare and uncontrollable. State law says utility companies are not liable for service interruptions caused by circumstances out of their control. But in my mind, just because you're not required to doesn't mean it's not the right thing to do. For many now, the question of meeting their insurance deductible is on their own. Educating, like you said, customers in terms of what measures we might be able to take. Now, I've spent the day reaching out to the city, state, and others to get you some answers of what to do next. MGNE says customers should reach out to homeowners insurance providers to get some costs covered. They'll help get the proper documentation to insurance companies. You can also contact their legal department. Meanwhile, the Public Service Commission recommends contacting the Wisconsin Home Energy Assistance Program for emergency furnace repair, replacement, and crisis assistance.